As markets count down to the Fed's June meeting on rates, policymakers are still grappling with the prospect of fighting high inflation without further hurting the banking sector. Our next guest says the Fed will keep rates higher for longer than the markets expect. Here with her insights is Alexander Wilson Elizondo, Deputy CIO of Multi Asset Solutions at Goldman Sachs Asset Management. Alexander, great to have you with us. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I first want to ask you about the debt ceiling because you, like many others, think that something will actually happen, but it's what happens afterwards. So, what are the longer term impacts that investors should be thinking about? Yeah. I Exactly. Our key point is that we've been here 78 times before. We've seen a resolution. It always it hasn't always been clean. There's lots of volatility, but typically the trend continues from where you originally started from. It's really the secondary order effects that are really important, and that's the confidence channel in the U.S. government, and that's in terms of fiscal spending. One of the biggest things that's driven the, the markets this year has been that fiscal support we've seen over the last 8 to 12 months, you know, so close to $800 billion of, of stimulus. And so if that fades and we ultimately do see some sort of, you know, growth patch that, that goes down, what's really going to drive us back out of that? And that's where we're spending our time right now. Okay. So you have that as a drag on top of a tightening credit picture uh, in rising rates. Uh, and so where are you advising people to put their money? We were just having a conversation about private credit because it gives you such returns compared to uh, any other asset class, basically. Yeah, we, we really think that we're in the bend, not break stage of the cycle, and that's why we're seeing a lot of mixed data come through. And in that time period, where while the Fed is keeping rates higher, um, the economy can very well you know, stay positive and continue to grow, but just at a lower rate. And the key focus for us there is, you know, there's a lot of opportunity. There's some fear in the marketplace. Those are the places you want to go and start looking for, um, and one of those is private credit. You're talking, you know, mid-teens, low-teens returns profiles, and you can do it on your terms, or you can pick up secondaries at a discount. Um, and we think from a diversified portfolio perspective, that makes a lot of sense. And the other benefit to private credit is you're at the top of the capital stack in terms of risk, so people like that uh, prospect. Your, your clients are typically insurance companies, pensions, sovereign wealth funds, as well as retail. What are you seeing about their desire right now for exposure to public markets and public stocks and what are you advising? Yeah, one of the things that we've seen in the marketplace is that there's a lot of cash on the sidelines. Um, people have referenced, you know, really attractive yields and T-bills. Well, now T-bills are, are trading somewhat, you know, cheap because of the debt ceiling. Uh, we've been focused on saying stay invested. This is a market that deserves a neutral posture. Um, and when you look at, you know, equity markets, some of that resilience is because people have been underinvested in risk assets. And this could very well take us, you know, over year end time period, which we discussed um, in terms of when we start to see growth turn down. And when you look at, you know, the positives, if you take the ledger and you look at the positives and the negatives in the marketplace, we see starting to see more positives. Um, and we think that there's some upside risk. So this is a market where you don't want to sell the upside, but you can actually effectively cheat, um, buy cheap protection. And so that's what we've done to, you know, mitigate some of these, you know, volatile time periods like the debt ceiling. In terms of cash, I mean, it makes sense if you're earning 5% on short-term treasuries to just stay there and not go into stocks, right? I mean, that, that's what clients are thinking. It is, but this is, you know, it depends on your time frame. Are we, are we tactically looking at the market? Um, but we, we see so much resilience and there's so much information content in how resilient the market has been, how, how resilient credit spreads have been, even throughout the entire crisis in banking. Um, and, and when we look at tech, you know, which a lot of people are focused on, it's become 40 percent of, you know, the, the broader market. But there's so many reasons that it actually is trading the way it is and it deserves to trade that way. And whether it's, you know, quality, you're looking at companies with, you know, X billions of cash on hand, um, free cash flow generation, whether it's trading on duration while, while the you know, rates curve has been somewhat contained. The prospects for AI, that's driving a lot of this stuff. Exactly. And our global investment research team has been focused on, you know, over the next 10 years, you're looking at $7 trillion of, you know, you know, potential pump into that space. And so in growth terms, there deserves to be somewhat of a growth multiple there. What, what happens if the government actually decides to cut back spending even more and pulls back on the investment plans that have been put to this point? How does that change the picture, if at all? Yeah, I, I think that that's, that's the big question, and that's why we're focused on that, that second-order effect of, you know, clients are saying, when is the recession coming? And we're trying to change that narrative and the questioning. It's about how deep and wide it will be and what pulls us out. And if the government does really pull back, 
um, that, that's going to be an issue. If the government really pulls back, the Fed continues to raise rates because they think inflation is still a problem. That changes the whole perspective? It, it, it somewhat does, but it also depends on timing. Um, and I think, you know, people have been looking for leverage in the system. You don't really have to look much further than the U.S. government. You know, at the peak in 21, we were at, you know, 134 percent debt to GDP. There's an issue here. It has to be resolved. Um, the Brinkman ship is ultimately going to it's going to come to a head, and, and we're going to have to tighten up some of the spending. Yeah, I mean, tighten up the spending at the same time the Fed is raising rates and quantitative tightening is taking place. Yep. It, it's kind of hard to understand what the impacts will be. That, it, and, and that's why it's so important to be in a diversified portfolio from our perspective. And even though the Fed is raising rates, we do find the hedging, you know, the hedging outcomes of fixed income to be really important. Um, and so we've seen, you know, 30 basis point back up in 10-year yields in a short period of time. That's starting to look attractive to us again.